Okay, so I start off on the very first hand. Uh, is, uh, well, it's not the very first hand. It's hand number eight. It's the first hand I'm going to talk about. Interestingly, this is my favorite hand. Uh, not this hand in particular, but the hand that he's holding, Black Aces. I actually have a cat named Aces, Black Cat, and it's named Aces. And you know, it took me a lot, actually. It's uh, We have two cats. The first cat I tried to name Aces. I was overruled by the rest of my family. Now I have a cat named Black Aces. Uh, he's not actually called Black Aces. He's called Aces. And it's Aces the cat, Aces the black cat. And so Aces, Black Aces are my favorite hand uh, in all of poker. Um, mixed Aces are good, too. Uh, red Aces are also good. But Black Aces, for some reason, I just love them. Uh, so... So, you know, obviously the, the the significance of this hand is we haven't played a hand yet. Um, you can see on the bottom it's got, you know, uh, seven whites, squares, and then it gets to this. Uh, the in, other interesting thing about the uh, this tournament, the 300K guarantee, the Sunday Storm, it actually starts at 5K and chips. So not only uh, do you have a bazillion people in the tournament, you start with 2K more than any other tournament um, or most tournaments. So what happens is you get a ton and there's people that sat into this tournament. And I've talked in other videos about the value of satellites and the people who end up in them. So you've got a lot of people who can't even afford $10 to play who have sat it into this tournament, paying 50 cents or FPPs or whatever uh, to get into this tournament. And so the play in here is unbelievably bad. Um, and, it, you know, the worse the play, the higher the variance. But the better, the bigger edge you have. So you can see this hand. Um, we're in a, we're in the big blind with aces. Uh, there's an early position limper, and you get a lot of people. They got a lot of chips. They want to play. The blinds are 10, 20, and you get someone who decides in the small blind to raise. Now in that small blind position, I myself wouldn't even raise ace queen because, and the biggest reason is I don't want to even juice a pot that people are not going to fold. You're just not going to be able to make it a number enough that you're going to be able to get heads up with anyone. Uh, you make it 80, they're all going to call, and you're going to be out of position. And even if the flop comes ace, queen, five, uh, or let's say ace, five, two, you might have the guy in there with five, two, and you have no idea where you're at. So I don't like to build huge pots when I'm out of position, I'm first act, or whatever. So the fact that this guy makes it 80 to me is an indication that one, the other has a huge hand, or he has no idea what he's doing. Um, and he makes it 80, which gives our hero, who's Jay Cash Collector, is showing the black aces, a huge opportunity here. Now, one of the things that I love, and, and this is a hand actually, uh, I'll show you guys my notes actually when I'm done, um, but this is a hand that I love the way he played. And one of the things, this hand gives him a huge opportunity to make a significant raise. And he makes a significant raise to 300. Now, what this does is the other villains would have probably called 80, but they're not going to call 300. And the the original guy, like I said, he either doesn't know what he's doing or he has a big hand. He'll never fold to that 300. So you're going to get heads up in position versus a guy who either has a big hand or doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so that's a huge advantage. And you can see the other two people fold and the villain uh, calls. Now, obviously, <laughs> this is a pretty decent flop for us. Uh, it's not actually, though, because when you get quad aces, the problem is, and nobody has another ace, and unless the guy has pocket tens here, uh, you really shouldn't make a lot of money off it. However, um, you probably will uh, make a lot of money off it if the guy either A, has a big hand, or B, doesn't know what he's doing. So if you uh, see what happens here, the, the villain leads out for more than pot, which is like, well, it doesn't make sense. Why is he doing that? Is he trying to rep a big hand? Is he trying to, he's assuming we don't have an ace, and now he's trying to rep the ace. Like, it's really confusing exactly what he's trying to do here. But he bets pot plus one, like pot times half. Obviously, you know, we know we're not worried about our hand here. We have the best hand, and we have the unbeatable nuts. There's nothing that's going to go. Like, a, a royal flush isn't even possible in this sport. So basically there's almost no point in raising because, and what happens here a lot and new players, and I know the student of mine, he would have definitely uh, raised here in the past just because he would get a little bit excited about his hand and he'd want to get money in. And, and you can again assume, 
I think we got to go back to this villain doesn't know what he's doing. Because um, even King's there, the, the best sizing makes no sense. So there's nothing that makes sense here. Unless he has pocket tens and he's hoping we have like Ace King or something. It's the only thing that makes sense. But the best sizing here makes little to no sense. And even if you have pocket tens and you're hoping we have Ace King, betting that much with pocket tens doesn't make sense. Even betting with pocket tens doesn't make sense, considering our hero was the one that uh, three bet pre.